Tauranga Art Gallery was approached about a year and a half ago by the Tauranga City Council to collaborate on a street art project, which is now Paradox Tauranga Street Art Festival. In addition to what's happening in the gallery, there's a series of murals happening out in the city. This is the first time that a municipal gallery in a major city in this part of the world has been given over to street artists lock, stock and barrel. And I don't think it's happened many times in, in the world. When people think about an art gallery, they think about white spaces with paintings on the walls and lots of rules and restrictions. And that's kind of what we were pushing for, is to change perceptions of what an art gallery can do and how broad we can think about art. The lovely thing about this genre is that it's not elitist, it's popularist, you know, it's for everybody and I think that's why people feel comfortable with it. And I think that's why the shows that we put on and, and other street art shows around the world attract massive audiences by comparison to, you know, a, a normal art show. It isn't about someone being chosen, it's actually people making a name for themselves and in essence anyone can become a street artist. They don't have to go to a certain school, they don't have to study at a certain university, they don't have to follow a dictated path and that's what I love about it. There's certainly an appetite for it at the moment and with events like the Christchurch earthquakes it's created this kind of vacuum or this space where street art can kind of come in and fill it because it was about kind of reinvigorating a space. What we know is people love to come in and see all the works by Banksy and these other great artists, Fail, David Cho, Adam Neat, Paul Insect. But what we'd really hope that we can achieve is that people will be drawn in to see Banksy, but walk out talking about all of the amazing installations produced live specifically for this event. So the Roan empty installation has got a false wall with three doors in it and each of those doors has got a peephole in it that you can look through and see one of the works that he produced in a derelict house in Melbourne for that show. There's a little hideaway where four people at a time can put a VR set on and actually be transported into those rooms while Roan's explaining his thinking behind those works. As you go upstairs, you come to a huge scaffold structure and that suspends across the length of it four huge sheets of perspex offset left and right that people have to weave their way through. But it's not until you get all the way through and you look at it from one particular point that the whole artwork comes into, into place and Soffles has taken it to a whole new level. It's just amazing. And as you come around the corner, you come to the installation by Lucy McLaughlin, which is a series of waves and circles both created directly on the walls and off-site for specifically for this this installation it's quite amazing watching her work it's the first time she's been to this part of the world absolutely thrilled that she's she's come here and uh, agreed to produce this work live in the gallery for us and then you come to a cube room which is about five meters square and Finta McGee who's from Sydney has basically tasked us with finding three small boats for him and what he's done is painted the wall behind the boats fish sort of like almost like that you'd see at a, a, at a wholesale fish market and then the whole floor is covered in this amazing black sand that glistens and sparkles that's almost the finale of the show and it, it works as a, an amazing finale In a regional city like Tauranga, it's about engaging with those people that don't normally come into our gallery. And I would be hopeful that over the two and a half months that Paradox is open, that we will get a bunch of people that haven't been here before, and that they want to come back because they're now not afraid of walking through the doors. When I think back to when we first arrived in New Zealand in 2009, if someone had said to me that by, you know, 2017, we'd be doing this, I would have just laugh. Now things have changed at such a pace and it isn't obviously just what we're doing, it's the whole graffiti street art movement and how it's exploding exponentially across the world and how popular it's becoming and how many people are falling in love with it. 
people will come into this gallery in their droves from this area who've never been in a gallery before in their lives. You know, the local council here, I just can't thank them enough for actually seeing that and, and wanting to do that.